Syndrome of Inappropriate Antidiuretic Hormone Secretion Introduction The Syndrome of Inappropriate Antidiuretic Hormone Secretion, also called SIADH, is a condition that happens when your body makes too much antidiuretic hormone, leading to impaired water excretion and excessive water retention, leading to the development of hyponatremia. SIADH should be suspected in any patient with hyponatremia, hypoosmolality, in a urine osmolality above 100 milliosmoles per kilogram. In the SIADH, the urine sodium concentration is usually above 40 milliequivalents per liter, the serum potassium concentration is normal, there is no acid-base disturbance, and the serum uric acid concentration is frequently low. Etiology Ectopic production of antidiuretic hormone, most commonly from small cell lung carcinoma. Central nervous system disorder or trauma, such as stroke, hemorrhage, infection, or psychosis. Enhance antidiuretic hormone release. Pulmonary disease, particularly pneumonia, viral, bacterial, tuberculous, can lead to the syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone secretion. Surgery, especially transphenoidal pituitary surgery. Hyponatremia is also a common late complication of transphenoidal pituitary surgery. Although relative cortisol deficiency may contribute, the major cause is inappropriate antidiuretic hormone release from the injured posterior pituitary gland. Drugs Chlorpropamide, cyclophosphamide, carbamazepine, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, for example, fluoxetine and sertraline. Pathophysiology Pathogenesis of hyponatremia The plasma sodium concentration is a function of the ratio of the body's content of exchangeable sodium and potassium and total body water as described by Edelman's classic equation. Plasma sodium concentration is equal to exchangeable sodium plus exchangeable potassium divided by total body water. Antidiuretic hormone secretion results in concentrated urine and therefore urinary output is reduced. The higher the plasma antidiuretic hormone, the more concentrated the urine. In most patients with a syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone secretion, ingestion of water does not adequately suppress antidiuretic hormone and the urine remains concentrated. This leads to water retention, which increases total body water. This increase in total body water lowers the plasma sodium concentration by dilution. In addition, the increase in total body water transiently expands the extracellular fluid volume and thereby triggers increased urinary sodium excretion, which both returns the extracellular fluid volume toward normal and further lowers the plasma sodium concentration. Hyponatremia can occur in SIADH, even if the only fluid given is isotonic saline. In normal individuals, plasma antidiuretic hormone levels are very low when the plasma osmolality is below 280 milliosmoles per kilogram, thereby permitting the excretion of ingested water, and antidiuretic hormone levels increase progressively as the plasma osmolality rises above 280 milliosmoles per kilogram. Clinical Manifestations Patients may experience the following symptoms cognitive slowing and confusion, anorexia, ataxia with muscle weakness causing falls, generalized seizures, coma. Note, these symptoms are typically only seen with severe or acute onset hyponatremia. Diagnosis. Physical exam is most often normal with no evidence of fluid overload or volume depletion. Normal blood pressure, skin turgor, etc. Diagnosis is made using both the clinical appearance of euvolemia and the laboratory results described below. When a SIADH is suspected, the following lab tests should be ordered, and these results are consistent with the syndrome of SIADH. Serum electrolytes, sodium, potassium bicarbonate, low sodium, normal potassium and bicarbonate. Serum osmolality, low. Urine osmolality, Submaxly dilute, more than 100 milliosmoles per kilogram. 
urinary sodium excretion, normal or high, not reduced like other causes of hyponatremia. Anion gap, reduced. Serum blood urea nitrogen, low, less than 10 mg per deciliter. Serum uric acid, low, less than 4 mg per deciliter. Blood glucose, normal value rules out hyperglycemia as a cause of hyponatremia. Serum cortisol, normal value rules out adrenal insufficiency as a cause of hyponatremia. Thyroid stimulating hormone, normal value rules out hypothyroidism as a cause of hyponatremia. Correction of hyponatremia after fluid restriction is indicative of a syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone secretion. Imaging is used to find the cause of SIADH rather than to come to the initial diagnosis of SIADH. Chest X-ray may show small cell lung carcinoma producing exogenous antidiuretic hormone. Head computer tomography or magnetic resonance imaging may show a brain tumor or other central nervous system disorder causing excessive antidiuretic hormone production. It may also show cerebral edema, a complication of SIADH. Complications of SIADH are typically neurologic issues, such as seizure or coma, due to hyponatremia. Treatment Treatment focuses on correcting hyponatremia. First-line therapy in emergent situations is infusion of 3% hypertonic saline. Do not correct sodium levels too quickly, as rapid normalization of sodium levels can lead to central pontine myelinolysis. The goal is to raise serum sodium levels by 0.5 to 1 milliequivalent per hour. Sodium levels should not be raised more than 10 to 12 milliequivalent in the first 24 hours. Maximum sodium level is 125 to 130 milliequivalent per liter. In non-emergent situations, use fluid restriction and or V2 receptor antagonist. Fluid restriction limits water intake, forcing the kidneys to excrete free water from plasma to maintain the fixed osmolality dictated by antidiuretic hormone secretion. V2, vasopressin receptor antagonist. The vaptins reduce aquaporin channels in the renal collecting ducts, thereby decreasing the permeability of the duct to water and reducing the amount of water reabsorbed into the body in the collecting duct. Furosemide and other loop diuretics can also be used to increase free water excretion, but should be used in conjunction with infusion of hypertonic saline to avoid net sodium loss. Demeclocycline, an older tetracycline, can induce diabetes insipidus by interfering with the action of antidiuretic hormone on the collecting duct. This drug is no longer commonly used because its onset of action can take over a week. It can be nephrotoxic in patients with liver disease, and it's no longer available in most countries. Aside from correcting hyponatremia, further care centers on finding and treating the cause of the syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone secretion. This may involve surgery or chemotherapy for small cell lung carcinoma, antibiotics for pneumonia, neurology and cardiology intervention for central nervous system disorder, medication management for drug-induced syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone secretion. That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.